Welcome back, guys, to the co-op run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Hyperstone Heist for the Sega Genesis. I love how there's a little red glowing border outside the actual picture. Normally on most, like, older TVs you wouldn't see that, but on, like, widescreen TVs and stuff you will see it, or if you record it, of course. Vaughn and I have a little deal between the Ninja Turtle games and Mega Man 7. If he skips a Technodrome cutscene, I get to skip Freeze Man's secret pose. Whereas, it also goes the other way. If I skip a Freeze Man pose, he gets to skip a Technodrome scene. Which, uh, he has a free pass on the Technodrome scenes because I accidentally skipped a Freeze Man pose. I'm glad that he didn't choose to use that free pass there, though. I wanted to see that scene so I could show the glowing red border outside the actual picture. This stage is obviously reminiscent of the final stage from uh, Turtles in Time. It also kind of reminds me of Starbase, where no turtle has gone before, which is the second to last stage. Just some of the glass floors that you see here, and they remind me of that stage. Other than that, everything else in this stage is obviously reminding me of the final stage from Turtles in Time. This is the very first time you ever see these guys here in Hyperstone Heist. Awfully late in the game for them to appear, but nah, whatever. I usually take them out the exact same way every time. I line myself up along the very bottom three, run and slide to try to take out all three of them if I can. Of course, Vaughn and I took out the mousers as we usually do by dash tackling into them. Of course, we got Stone Warriors here. Just give them a taste of their own medicine with uh, dash tackles and whatnot. Stone Warriors are really annoying. They especially get annoying whenever they start carrying guns and bazookas and stuff. That's whenever they would be the most annoying. Yeah, usually whenever I'm playing two players with Vaughn, I'll take out the bottom three of those things if I can, and he'll take out the top two. Makes quick work of them. This stage also shares elements from the first Technodrome stage in Turtles in Time. There's an area later on in the game that's really cheap. It reminds me a lot of Turtles 2, the arcade game for the NES. I remember an area similar to it in uh, that game. We'll get to that whenever we get to that, though. It's one of mine and I'm sure Vaughn's least favorite areas in this entire game. It can be pretty cheap. I like this part right here. I like how it looks like the foot soldiers are coming out of laundry chutes. Kind of funny. One thing that I like about playing co-op is whenever you and your partner slam a foot soldier around at the same time. Just kind of funny whenever you slam them together in sync. Back whenever me and Vaughn first started hanging out, he used to always pick uh, Donatello as his Ninja Turtle. I was always the one who would change every time, but he hasn't done that in quite some time. Usually we random our turtle. Except in Turtles in Time, sometimes we'll go ahead and pick, but uh, we do the little versus mini game, and whoever wins best out of three in that will get to pick their turtle first. Here's the area that I was talking about earlier that's really cheap and reminds me of Ninja Turtles 2 because there's these things in Ninja Turtles 2 as well. I usually try to stay against the wall so that they can't get me. Vaughn's a little more risky though. He'll go out there and take on the foot soldiers. Me though, I'd rather wait for them to come to me so that I can take them out without having to worry too much about these cheap little ice dispensing machines. Whatever they are. There's an area coming up with a bunch of these gigantic cannonball type things. I'm not really sure what they are. They're just gigantic balls and they bounce down the aisle. I hate that part of this level. It's really cheap in my opinion. It got me and Vaughn both times. I'm sure that all you have to do is slide underneath it, but I always try to jump over them and I fail every time. Just instinct to jump. It actually wound up killing Vaughn to got his first life right here because of uh, little bouncing balls. Me and Vaughn know the most about Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist. We have played through Manhattan Project in the arcade game on the NES, but usually we end up playing Hyperstone Heist or Turtles in Time. Usually whenever we end up playing Turtles 2, we end up playing the actual arcade game since it's four players. I usually prefer to play the NES arcade game though, Turtles 2, because it has more stages and more bosses, but we usually end up playing the actual arcade game because you can play with more than two people and usually we have more than two people around us and usually a third player will join in. We have nothing against Turtles 2 the arcade game or Turtles 3 the Manhattan Project. We just haven't played through them as much. I love all the beat-em-up Ninja Turtle games that are based on the classic series Ninja Turtles. We do need to get more in practice with the arcade game of Manhattan Project. Usually at this part, Vaughn will take on the enemies to the right and I'll take them on to the left, but it usually ends up turning into a free-for-all of kill whoever's closest to us. 
Here we are at the first boss battle of this stage, which is just the crank battle from Theon Knight Riders in Turtles in Time. Pretty much, Vaughn and I just use the same strategy that we used against Leatherhead and Rocksteady. Whoever has the turtle with the longest reach gets to do most of the attacking. Pretty much, we just dodge Krang until he fires off his missiles. Once he does that, we get our hits in. Sometimes you can get as many as five or six hits, but other times you can only get about three or four hits. I love how whenever Krang goes to shoot the missiles, you can see his, quote, part, unquote. Just like in Turtles in Time, whenever this form of Krang gets low on health, he'll start shooting bombs into the air, and then it's a dodging frenzy to try and not get hit. Yeah, like I said, just stay away from him, avoid him until he's fired some missiles, and then get your attacks in. Sometimes Vaughn likes to follow him around and hit him with his weapon, even though it doesn't do damage. I guess Vaughn is just trying to get an early hit in on Krang before he can do any attacks or whatever. I personally always just avoid him until he's fired missiles. I find that to be safer and a better strategy overall. Never really seemed like Krang ever used the wings on the back of his android in the original cartoon. I can think of one time that he used him, but that's about it. Yeah, it was pretty early in the series' life, and uh, I remember he picked up Shredder and flew back to the Technodrome with him, and it was near the end of the episode, so that's the last that you've seen of them in that episode. Other than that, I don't ever recall Krang using the wings on his android for anything. I'm sure he probably did, I'm just not remembering them. If me and Vaughn would have been thinking, we would have switched places and I would have fought Krang for the rest of the battle, but we weren't thinking at all and he wound up losing a life. It wasn't long after this that Krang started to use his bomb attack where he shoots them all into the air and they land on the ground. I got screwed over at this part. I got hit by one bomb and then as soon as Wrath got up, he got hit by another bomb. So he lost quite a bit of health all in one go there, which is pretty much bullcrap. At this point, I wasn't too terribly worried about my health because me and Vaughn kind of forgot that there's still more to this stage. We were looking at the background expecting to teleport into that thing and then go back to present time where we would have full health for the final battle of the game. Once Crank blew up and everything though, and uh, we seen the next part of the stage, we're just like, oh, right. <laughs> I was still hoping that there would be pizza here on this elevator, but they weren't that kind to us. There would have been pizza on the elevator segment in Turtles in Time, but not here in Hyperstone Heist. I guess they figured that it's the last stage, they don't need to be putting no pizza there to make it easier on us. In the elevator segments in both Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist, Vaughn and I always split up. He'll take everything on the right, I'll take everything on the left. One thing that I think is kind of neat about the elevator segment here in Hyperstone Heist is that unlike in Turtles in Time where the elevator goes up, the elevator actually goes down here in Hyperstone Heist. Just the little details that I like, just kind of interesting. You'll see quite a few enemies throughout the elevator segment. You won't see all of the enemies, but you'll see quite a few of them. You won't see no stone warriors or those little things that fall down onto the ground and then stand up. You won't see anything like that, but you'll see Roadkill, Rodneys, Mousers, various foot soldiers, stuff like that. One thing that I never do in Turtles in Time is the time trials. It just never really seems worth my time to do the time trials. If I'm going to play the game at all, I'm going to play the actual, you know, story mode, or however you want to look at it, the main game itself. I don't really want to do no time trials or anything. We used to never do the versus game in Turtles in Time until we decided to make that a deciding factor on who gets first pick at the Ninja Turtle in that game. That's about all that we do. That uh, game, though, is just one round of it, which is three games. Whoever gets best out of three gets first uh, pick at their Ninja Turtle. We never do more than that, though. You'll know whenever you're near the end of the elevator segment because foot soldiers will start to come out of the floor somehow, materializing out of it. But that's how you know that you're near the end of the elevator segment. I mentioned doing the versus game in Turtles in Time to decide who gets the first pick at their Ninja Turtle in that game, and I also mentioned Mega Man 7 earlier in this video. Vaughn and I will sometimes do a similar thing in Mega Man 7 to decide who gets first pick at the stage. There we'll do the versus game, whoever wins the best out of three and then gets first pick. Usually though, me and him won't worry about that, we'll just tell whoever to go first. The battle against Super Shredder hasn't changed a bit since its battle in uh, Turtles in Time. 
pretty much just do your absolute best to avoid him. If he gets anywhere near you and uh, he can hurt you with that aura that surrounds him, the color of the aura determines what attack he's going to do, so let that be assigned to you. If he glows red, he's going to shoot fire along the ground. If he glows green, he's going to shoot a ball of energy that will demutate you, turn you back into a regular turtle. And if he glows blue, he's going to shoot ice beams into the air that'll freeze you if you're trying to jump kick him. Usually I always try to jump kick him, but I'd be careful and try to watch out for him uh, turning blue. I try to jump kick him usually because two out of three of his attacks go along the ground, so you, you can avoid the attacks and get a hit on him at the same time if you jump kick. But occasionally he will do that ice attack and get you, though. Vaughn usually tries to get Shredder from behind, though, I believe. I always try to get him with jump kicks, though. Overall, it's the same basic idea, though. Dodge Shredder until he's done an attack. Try to get a hit in on him during a short time that he's vulnerable. After you've gotten a hit, pound on him until he's moved to a new location. Repeat. Obviously, being the last boss of the game, Super Shredder has a ton of health, so expect this battle to take a long time. I love his death animation, though he has to walk over to that rail and just fall over. I love his scream, too. And it's time to check out the ending. There's the Hyperstone. That ending kind of reminds me of the final battle in the first Ninja Turtles movie where Splinter drops him off the side of the building and he falls into the dump truck. <laughs> Just that long fall reminds me of that. I like this part here. You see a little kid jump out in the crowd and wave to the camera. And what's Splinter doing out in public? I thought that he was supposed to be staying in the, the sewers out of the public's eye. Whatever though. Not a big deal. You'll see the kid here in just a moment. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Mom! Whatever, though. I like that they use Pizza Power as the credits music here. I like how, uh, if you look at Raphael, it looks like Michelangelo slapped him in the face and he's getting ready to fall off the turtle blimp. And Leo's just trying to look like a badass, and Don's just like, yeah! But just that little Raph and Michelangelo scene there just kind of cracks me up. It looks like Raph really did get smacked in the face and he's about to fall off. You might notice here in Hyperstone High so you can see each of the turtle's individual teeth, whereas in Turtles in Time it's just one big white place in their mouth for the teeth instead of the little black lines showing each, each individual one. So yeah, it's like I said, Vaughn and I play through the Ninja Turtle games quite a bit. And also, like I said, we haven't played through Manhattan Project in the arcade game quite as much as we have Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist. But we do like them all about the same, really. Any of the beat-em-up Ninja Turtles that are based on the classic series cartoon are all really good to me. I even like the first Ninja Turtles game for NES. Vaughn doesn't care much for that one, but I enjoy it. Me and Vaughn never play with the comic-styled coloring. We did it one time, and we didn't care for how they colored Donatello, so we always just stick to the anime style of coloring. Not that it really matters one way or the other, it doesn't affect gameplay in any sort of way at all. If you beat the game on hard mode, you'll get a little bonus ending on top of seeing the credits and uh, seeing Shredder fall over the side of the building and everything. Turtles in Time definitely had the better of the two bonus endings. Here in Hyperstone Heist, it shows the cast and everything, just like it does in Turtles in Time. Only here in Hyperstone Heist, it just shows pictures of them. Whereas in Turtles in Time, it actually shows little cutscenes of the Ninja Turtles kicking butt, and then the Ninja Turtles getting beaten up by all the bad guys and everything. Still though, I do like the pictures that they show you here in Hyperstone Heist. They look pretty cool. Although they're just taken from the little intro cutscene and everything. Still though. Kinda neat, that they, kinda neat that they at least gave you a little bonus ending for beating it on hard, I suppose. The turtles are the only ones who actually get portraits by their names, none of the other characters do. They're also the only ones who get little subtitles to their names and whatnot, telling people what they do for the turtles or whatever. As you can see right here, it just tells you the names of the rest of the cast, April O'Neil, Master Splinter, Foot Soldier, Roadkill Rodney, Pizza Monster, Mouser, Robot walkers, stone warriors, etc., etc. 
I like that they made Tatsu a boss here in Hyperstone Heist. I always wondered how come they never made him a boss in any of the other Ninja Turtles games. Being Shredder's right-hand man in the movies and all. But, uh, whatever. It's not a big deal, I suppose. If you like Turtles in Time, then you'll definitely like Hyperstone Heist if you've never tried it out. I mean, I searched for the game for years before I finally found it at the local video game store. Vaughn was with me whenever I bought it, we picked it up immediately and went straight to my house and had our first run of it together. And we tore the game apart, it was a lot of fun. Put in our little initials here for whatever. And well, guys, this concludes our co-op run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Hyperstone Heist for the Sega Genesis. I hope you all enjoyed watching and everything, and you all know the drill. Comment, subscribe, and all that. Thank you for watching.